Hello everyone. So today I'm going to do this is going to be more of a raw video. I'm um, going to show you kind of the process of how I'm doing this rather than a very polished and edited video like some of my other DIYs just because this is more art than a DIY. Um, I hope you guys don't mind but first I'm going to just explain what we're doing here or what I'm doing here and I wanted to create a piece of wall art for my daughter and I was actually very inspired. We went to a little art studio not too far from our town and she had some beautiful artwork on the walls and she had something that kind of reminded me of mermaid fins but it was actually a turtle and from there I was just like oh my goodness I've been wanting to do something with this wall decal forever and I just didn't know how to transform it and I love the, the design and the tail and everything but I wanted to do more on the wall so when I saw it I immediately saw mermaid fins and I was like oh my goodness I have to incorporate this into some sort of art so we're taking the mermaid decal and we're going to apply it to an art canvas it doesn't have to be art canvas you can apply it to a piece of cardboard you can apply it to a nice thick poster board that you can buy at the Dollar Tree. So it does not have to be done on this year. However, you can purchase these at the Dollar Tree. Some stores have them and others don't. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this entire mermaid. I'm not sure how I'm going to transform her yet. So bear with me as I work through this process. This is very, very raw and my first time attempting to do this. So this here is a little mesh bag that had some onions in it, red onions. So you can find these um, with clementines, onions, off avocados. So if you are going to be trying to do something like this, hang on to one of these bags. Even tennis balls or little balls sometimes from the Dollar Tree come in these little bags. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to cut this open. And basically it's going to become, it's going to create an embossing effect on the art that we're going to create. So if you see the mermaid fins, I'm going to glue the material to the mermaid. And I'm going to kind of spread it just like this. And I'm just going to warm up my hot glue gun and then I'm going to maybe just use it to border this part and then kind of just apply it down because the all-purpose glue is not working and Mod Podge I think is just going to make too much of, an, of a mess in the meantime. So I'm just going to figure out how the fins will look the nicest. I think this is really, this is going to be really neat. And you, some of you may already know this, you can create your own watercolors if you don't have any at home. And that's simply by mixing, um, all you need is some cornstarch. Um, you can make corn syrup with some, you can use corn syrup or you can mix some um, brown sugar with water until you have about a quarter spoon of a nice syrup. So you can do that and then baking soda and white vinegar and then a drop of food coloring would create your own watercolor. I believe there are some tutorials out there for that. If not, maybe I can make one for you guys really quick. Another option, I'm going to take the easiest option <laughs> and that's by using actually acrylic paint or you can even have watercolors. The best thing is if you had watercolors, but I'm going to try actually creating um, a watercolor with acrylic paint because I know that this is accessible at the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to mix the uh, acrylic paint here with some water and then I'm going to canvas this entire piece as almost the ocean. I'm going to show you how to do that. Actually, you know what, while the hot glue is is running, as warming up, maybe what we'll do is we'll work on this. And then that, I'm, you're going to need some salt. Table salt is going to do the trick here. So we're going to create like a very ocean type effect on this canvas. So I'm going to move these guys here out of the way. And let's create some acrylic paint, um, water color with this acrylic paint. So I'm just going to... 
don't want, sorry. You don't want the acrylic paint too thick and you don't want it too, too thin. So I should have done this at the sink, but I'm trying to simplify this here on video. So I'm going to mix these two together. So this will color basically mix, give you more of a water color consistency. Make sure you're not coming out with The nice thing is if you have to add more acrylic paint, you can, or you can add more water, just like I have picked up some from the sides here and, and see here is like a little bit thicker. I'm just gonna make this one a little darker in case I need to pick up some more pigment. But basically what we're gonna do is run the paint all across the canvas. And then I'm going to take some table salt. I just have this really um, heavenly spices table salt. This one actually is from Dollarama. You can pick some up at Dollar Tree. I kind of always have that as a backup to pull out stains and stuff out of clothing. So this is going to come in handy for this DIY. So what you're going to do is just, we're going to create like the ocean effect. So I'm going to paint this Oh. and don't worry about your technique here I am not an artist at all I'm just very oh dear this um, paintbrush is not holding up very well but again so you want to paint the I'll get all those little I think it's time for me to invest in some good paintbrushes because the time that I do do art I prefer my paintbrush not to lose its bristles Anyone have any recommendations for a good paintbrush? So again, this is the ocean, so any which way your paint is going, it's going to be fine. Don't be too fussy here, because I'm gonna show you the really cool part. So I'm going to make sure I cover up my entire space. Feel like I'm rushing because I don't usually do these types of raw videos if I have to speed up I will and then I'll come back and chat with you basically you just cover up your board and I'm going to do the sides because I don't like to see the sides white um, if I'm going to hang this on the wall and which I'm planning on putting in my daughter's room so I hope this turns out as nicely as I had envisioned and that she actually likes this and if she doesn't well then it will stay in my craft room I love mermaids it's my she's Disney princess Ariel is my favorite princess who's your favorite princess or no princess at all no problem I just um occasionally do love some Disney movies and Ariel will always have a special place in my heart because she's my favorite princess and I just love mermaids okay so I want to make sure that the canvas is still a bit wet while I'm playing with it because this is the fun part so I have my mixy ocean type stuff and now I'm going to take my salt I'm going to sprinkle some salt on my board so what you're going to do is just sprinkle lightly wherever you want. Some places you can have, but the best thing is just to sprinkle a light touch of salt. And it's going to pull the watercolors up and create this wonderful effect, almost like a real ocean type effect. As you can see, it's already starting to pull the, to pull the color. So you want to allow it, to allow it to dry before you start working. I'm just going to go for it here. So you want it to dry and then once it's dry, I'll show you, but you're going to um, brush the salt 
right off of your canvas or paper. I'm just going to cover up these areas here that are a little bit more white. Didn't pick up as much of the pigment. Oh, I hope this turns out. I'm super excited to see how this works. Okay, so in the meantime, my hot glue gun has warmed up. Again, so we cheated by making a watercolor with acrylic paint. Sometimes you just gotta make do with what you have. I do have water colors, but because some may not have it, I thought I would give you guys an alternative to creating this because I don't want you to think you have to go out and buy stuff, any kind of acrylic paint will do or even making your own at home with some food coloring will do. So I'm going to set this to the side here. In fact, so let's see if we can do this. I'm going to get my little finger cover and I'm going to dab Oh, sometimes I think these little I hope I don't I'm going to dab some here and some here. The point here is just to, to fix down the, um, the ribbing, the mesh, whatever you want to call this stuff. So I'm going to be careful here because this hot glue is so freaking hot. It's kind of got like a I guess it's a higher setting than my other one. This is a new one that I got from banggood.com. I really like it because it's got a finer, smoother tip on the end and it's got my on and off switch, but it also has a really high setting. So I do like it, but I have to get used to it because when I was making those DIY pillows, I burnt myself. I burnt myself to the point where I got a huge blister on my thumb and it was gross. And so the best thing to do is either have these little finger guards or even have like a hot, um, a little towel soaked with um, cold water. It doesn't matter, any water. But if you at least get hot glue on it, make sure you wipe it off right away so it doesn't have time to sit on your skin and boil it, bubble it, or cook it. Because I hurt myself. And I told you guys in the video too, like, be so careful. So, hope this, I think this is working perfectly. Um, oh my, I'm burning my table, see? That's how hot this glue gun is. I usually have my little red container out and I didn't put it out. Let me grab it now. Or at least my silicone mat. Okay, so at this point, I think I'm safe to just work with it like over. Oh, and be careful. See how hot this freaking metal is? I just burnt a hole right through the, <laughs> right through the mesh. It just ripped it open. Okay, so you have to be careful with this technique as well. Don't rip apart your mesh. See that? It curls it all up. So let it cool before you start. Okay. Get my favorite scissors here and now what I want to do is I want to I can peel back the mermaid I can because it's a sticker so I can peel back the mermaid right off the sheet making it a little easier for me because this will just come right off
right? And now the mermaid has her fin like. So what I want to do is just cut the mesh all around the same as the mermaid's fin. So you just go around and cut this. I'm going to just take some of the big chunk out so it's easier to maneuver around here. But again, like this is art, right? So it doesn't have to be par perfect, but it is fun. And now you want to make sure the fins on this side are all nice and cut. So you want the scales to be on all of the... Like here I'm going to cut her hair off so that there's no hair there. I don't need that part anyways. That's just bonus of her hair strands. And here, I'm just going to cut that back. So you can kind of see it taking its shape here. So now this part here, I'm going to actually fin all of her hair there. It's not. I'm not going to leave it exposed. I think I'm just going to cover it all up. And I'm just going to fussy cut hard one it's sticky actually I probably should have cut it with the backing still on okay so I'm gonna fussy cut here because I want to make sure this detail is like really nice so that it comes all the way up to the midsection of the body and there we go I might actually leave the I might leave the hair exposed. I haven't figured it out yet because we haven't played with the foil yet. In order to speed up a little bit of the process, I actually brought the canvas outside to the yard so that it could dry a little bit quicker so we can continue on with this project. In the meantime, I'm going to take the mermaid. I'm actually going to flip her over. You want the aluminum. This is kind of like an embossing technique, but just more of like a, I would say, a DIY version of creating a metal effect. So you just want to, and I'm going to cut some of this stuff off. Oh. Be careful you don't cut off their tail. Now how am I going to do this? Ha 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 I can't see what I'm doing. Through the... It's too much. I gotta cut. So make sure you don't cover up the entire back so that you can cut from the... See this piece here doesn't doesn't matter. Because what you want is this piece to fold over. Same with this piece here, it doesn't matter either. Yikes, what am I doing? I seem to have done this all. Okay, so you gotta take one step at a time. Don't be lazy like me. <laughs> I'm trying to make this easier and faster, and unfortunately, I'm causing myself headaches because see, the fin has so much, so many details here. So you wanna just gently kind of work your way by wrapping and creating this really nice definition along the body. So this part here. See how it's nice and defined now? And because this is sticky, you don't even need tape. You just kind of work your way by folding it and creating this by folding it. See how it has this really nice. So once I, I'll show you. I don't want to start doing it yet, but um, you make sure you define the 
Ah! Don't be like me sticking stickers. This is why I'm working upside down. Okay, so the fin is right here. And again, the most important is the front is tucked under. The back doesn't matter because it's useless, right? So you wanna make sure, I've done this kind of incorrectly as I, this is the first time I'm doing this type of, like I said, I was inspired by a picture, but it, I've never done this before. So I'm learning and I thought I had this part tucked in. See, so you should maybe, if it didn't stick to the sticker because I had foil, make sure you secure it so it's not moving away on you. So don't stick the foil on the back. Don't flip it over. This was so silly of me because the most important is having the front flip over. What was I thinking? And I don't know. I don't think I have another one of these mermaids. The other ones are different. So here I am making cuts and holes now. Trying to expose this part that I was cheating on. See even the hair here? I have no idea how much work this is going to be. Like it's not a lot of work, but the learning process I didn't realize what it's going to take. But here we go. It's starting to form and you will start to see cut this into little foldable areas because you don't need all this extra foil. just needed to grab this little corner because I don't want the tape showing on the other side either, right? I think the best thing to do actually after doing this and learning is sticking this onto a piece of cardboard or not even like thick cardboard, maybe cardstock applying this to cardstock first, then applying your mesh, then applying the foil, then flipping the foil over onto the cardboard because the cardboard will be a lot thicker. You can just mold the foil right over the hard or cardstock or something, not cardstock, but poster board. It's something I can do again later. I think, I don't want to cut the sticker, but I also want this to be So the aluminum is really easy to cut with your exacto knife. And then I'm just gonna trim back some of this purple stuff. And now what I might do is even apply a little bit of hot glue here just to keep the foil down. Now be careful. Now for the next step, I canvas board from outside and then we'll continue. But I'm going to um, show you what happens now with the salt. So it kind of creates like a bubble, almost like a bubble-like effect on the canvas. So I've actually decided I'm going to use these metallics from the Dollar Tree. So there's the purple, the green, and the 
that's the blue. Sorry, I'm just gonna finish. So now we wanna make sure we get this off the table, the silhouette right now. And I'm gonna do a Mod Podge application. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna peel this guy back. Well, don't be so excited as me and peeling it crazy like. Go nice and slow. The silhouette here. Oh, how pretty is that gonna be? Oh, I hope this turns out nice. So now you can do this whole, like this theme for the whole design. That would be really neat. But because I've, I'm so set on using this fin. I'm gonna go create a Mod Podge. What color should I do with the body? Upper body. Look how neat that, look how neat this looks. Isn't that pretty? Like it just kind of has that ocean like bubble effect. Like look how pretty that is. I know it's hard to see in, but it looks so nice in person. Just a minute, a moment. Okay, so I'm indecisive about the glitter that I'll be using. So I'm going to do the fin and I'm gonna transform it into these three colors with this ocean blue. So should I do her upper body like in the pinks? Ooh, how about a white, like a shimmery white? And then with the fin, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna mix these two colors, I think. I've used the whites before. Yeah, that would be pretty, I think. Shimmery white. And then all the different colors on the bottom will pop on this white, oh, on the blue canvas. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my Mod Podge and a little mixing bowl, be right back. Okay, so I have my mixing bowl. These glitters, of course, are from Dollar Tree. Which is nice to pick up like a fun glitter when you see it because you just never know when you're going to need it. I'm going to mix these. They're both like this one's more white with just a very light glitter. And actually, I use these to do a transformation of some candles a few weeks back. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix some Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree. And we don't need a lot, the project is not very large. Oh, Mod Podge always has the strangest smell. Is it just me? Does anyone else notice that Mod Podge has like a really interesting scent? So I'm gonna mix these two glitters. I think I'm gonna stick more to the, actually no, that's pretty. The iridescent is really nice. <gasps> I'm making a glittery messy. I hate follow. And the reason why I always mix this straight with Mod Podge is because I prefer I prefer no fallout and this is quite time saving when it be, when it's followed so you just mix the Mod Podge directly with your glitter and now you've created like a glitter paste and you just take it Take it to your canvas just like you would paint anything else and apply it. And then you will allow this to dry. It takes about, I don't know, two hours usually to see it completely dry. Now I want to make sure that it's completely covered. I might even do some of the bubbles. Actually, I'm going to do that. Um, you want to make sure your entire area is covered with this Mod Podge mix of glitter. A nice even coat. Now this brush is much too big and wide. I should have used a smaller one. So you want to fill in all your spaces that are supposed to be glittery. How pretty is this going to be? I make sure I'm covering up all the areas that were not thin. I like to use the foam brushes for to apply these mediums evenly. Just makes it for a nicer coat. 
I don't know why, but every time I've worked with this Mod Podge glitter f mix, see the foam brush? It just s blends everything in really nice and smooth. I'm gonna just try to blend this in here so it's nice and even. Now I was talking a little bit about doing the bubbles. What do you guys think? Should I do, would you do the bubbles? Maybe that bubble there and this bubble here. Okay, so let's add some more Mod Podge quickly before this dries, playing around with it. But let's paint this one. So now just be careful if you're using a big wide one like me. I'm gonna let this dry, then we'll come back to it together. And um, I love this part here. I think just painting is so soothing. No wonder they say painting is good for you. It really is. You just, all you have to do is like focus on, and this is almost like painting and coloring at the same time. I love coloring. I just never sit down to do it. But this is almost similar because I have the decal, right, that I have to fill in. So um, it gives you that sense of coloring with a paintbrush. Okay, we're going to let this dry, then we're going to come back to it and we're going to finish. I'm going to go brush, wash my paintbrushes because I never do that. How terrible. I'm going to go wash up, clean up my work surface, and this should dry within the next 20 minutes or so, and then we'll come back and work on the thin. Well, that was a little longer than 20 minutes. It was actually a few days. So here we are with the finished product. It's all nice and dry. And I'm just going to peel the sticker back. So go ever so slowly and gently so that you're not peeling off any of the Mod Podge and that you're lifting anything where you're not supposed to. Even if the paper rips a little bit, then you can, we'll just go back in with some tweezers. Okay, so I'm going to cut off this, the foiled piece, because this is the accent piece to the bottom, of course, of the mermaid. It'll just be the fin or her tail that's going to be attached to the canvas eventually. You don't need the sticker portion at the top because I Mod Podged it with that iridescent glitter. So this is how it's going to be um, kind of like the finished idea here. Before I hot glue the tip fin down to the canvas, I'm actually just going to use this boning tool. You can use the back of a butter knife and just kind of press down on all of the ridges that we use that mesh to get this nice detail of the fin on the foil before we kind of take the next steps here to finish this off. Okay, I think I'm happy with the way it's looking. Do you see this? It's got all this beautiful detail, just like a real kind of metal type effect of a fin. And now I'm going to use some hot glue and actually glue this piece down before we take the next few steps. Okay, so you can use a black Sharpie here, but in this case, because I use the blue as the backdrop, I'm going to outline the fin in blue. And I'm using these markers from the Dollar Tree. They're the metallic markers, and they work really, really well for this part of the project.
And this is the fun part. So now you get to blend in all your sh markers. You can use Sharpies or Bic permanent marker. Again, I'm using all the metallics from the Dollar Tree. I just thought it would go perfect with the idea. And I'm going to just kind of shade in some areas. Then I'm going to start blending with other colors on top. I'm actually going to take the silver marker at this point and kind of just blend them the colors in together and you can get the effect that you're looking for by just mixing the colors make sure that you are blending when they're still wet if they dry then you'll just kind of erase the marker off of the metal or the aluminum so make sure that you're blending when the colors are still wet and that will just give you a really nice easy transition on the uh on the aluminum so have fun with this part and then you'll have the finished product i can't wait to finish this up and then show you guys the end result Once you're happy with the way you've blended it, you're pretty much finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this craft. Thanks so much for watching and until the next video, have a wonderful day. Bye for now.